Welcome to Get Wed, a podcast to plan your wedding by. I'm Katie. And I'm Kerry. And we're both here as professional photographers and brides-to-be to help you plan your big day. Each week we'll discuss a topic that you encounter along your wedding planning journey. And with the help of fellow industry experts, we'll navigate this crazy wedding world together. together. Hi everyone, thank you for listening to Get Wed. Um, We just want to take a moment just to thank you so much for all your support with our last season. We've had more listeners than we ever have done before. Ever. And we are just, ever. We are so, so happy that it might be helping some people. So thank you. Yeah, um, we just wanted to also take a moment today before we start our real episode um, that we would love it if you could take the time to review us on iTunes. And if you go over there, please give us five stars. Ah, Five stars. (laughs) Don't know why we're singing. Um, And that, just leave a little comment to let us know what you're finding useful, what you're enjoying about the show, just to help anybody else who might stumble upon it and fancy listening. Um, You can also join our Facebook group um, and we will also be talking on there between seasons when we're not recording. So if there's anything you want help with or if you want to chat to other brides, it's a really nice sort of group to get together and discuss things. Because next week is our last episode of season three. It's the week before I get married, so it's very, very exciting. Ah, that's scary, but not exciting, sorry. (laughs) So we will, obviously, after next week's episode, we'll be taking a little bit of a break because we break for the wedding season because we're going to be very busy and we're back kind of September-ish time, September, October time to start season four. Um, But up until then, you can also become a fan of ours on Patreon and this is something new that we started up this season. It basically gives you access to a secret to secret episodes that we're going to record they're 10 minutes long um and you can be involved and only get access to them if you're one of our patreon fans and if you take a higher reward on patreon you can also join us for a monthly q a call where we will answer all your wedding questions Um, so make sure you head over and look at that you can find all the links for our facebook page and patreon via our website which is www.getwebpodcast.co.uk and In the navigation, you'll find a link for the Facebook group. You'll find a link for reviewing on iTunes. And you'll also find a link for becoming a fan on Patreon. And we really hope to see some of you over there. Lovely. So, um, yeah, without further ado, to do, (laughs) to do. Back to Um, regular programme scheduling. (laughs) Yes, we will um, now be playing our episode with Jen. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Get Wed. Um, We have a really exciting episode for you today because we have uh, Jen joining us who probably has a dream job. She is a bridesmaid for hire and we are going to get all into what that means and how exciting it is in just a second. So um, welcome Jen, nice to have you on today. Hi, thank you so much for having me today. You are welcome. Uh, oh, sorry. So, sorry, Kerry. <laughs> <laughs> so um, firstly, would you like to just sort of introduce yourself and tell us a bit about you? Sure. So my name is Jen Glantz. I'm the founder of Bridesmaid for Hire. I started the business about three years ago uh, when I was a bridesmaid for my friends so many times that I noticed behind the scenes at weddings, there was a gigantic gap in the wedding industry. There was no one there whose job it was to be there for the bride. So I started a position where I'm there for her as her personal assistant, her on-call therapist, her social director, and her peacekeeper, just making sure everything flows smoothly. Right. It's such a and, genius and, idea. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. No, like Ker- Kerry saw you sort of come up the other day and we just thought that's so cool what you do. Thank you so much. <laughs> so um, can you explain what exactly it entails to be a bridesmaid for hire and how do, do the wed- rest of the, like, the wedding party take you well if you're not known by everybody? Yeah, so to be a bridesmaid for hire, oftentimes the bride will hire me and not tell anybody that she hired me, so I'll pretend to be her friend, we'll have a backstory. Uh, so oftentimes the bridal party, when I arrive, they're wondering who I am, they're wondering why I just showed up out of nowhere. So at first it can be a little bit awkward, and they're trying to figure out who I am, uh, but about 30 minutes in, I usually say that people start to warm up to me a little bit. I do a lot of the dirty work for the bridesmaids, helping them out with things that they need, so they they end up being pretty happy that I am there. Mm. Yeah, it's so interesting, isn't it? And have you ever had to kind of combat jealousy or or things like that in girls that you're kind of such a big part of somebody's wedding day? Definitely. I mean, I think sometimes the bridesmaids look at me and they wonder why I'm there, whether or not they know I'm hired. And I think sometimes they are jealous. But in any bridal party, you do have that dynamic between bridesmaids. You know, a lot of the women don't know each other before the wedding. Mm. Then they come they wonder why that friend is closer to the bride than they are. There's always a little bit of drama, I'd say, in a bridal party. 
Yeah. Yeah. And you also mentioned on your website that you offer, and I think this is really, really clever, um, an undercover maid of honour service. So that's to help people arrange what we know as a hen party over here. You know it as probably a bachelorette party over there. Um, can you tell us even more about that? Because I, I know it's mass- massively stressful for those who try to organise those sorts of things. Sure. So I always hear people say all the time that being a maid of honor feels like a full time job and not everybody has time for that. So I started a package where maid of honors can hire me to do the work for them without the bride knowing so they can carry on with their lives. And I'm the one that plans the bachelorette party, gives them tips for the bridal shower. They copy and paste whatever I send them and send it straight to the bride as if they did it themselves. So (laughs) it's off the pressure and the stress of having to do all this work when people are busy. That's such yeah. a clever idea. That's <laughs> so cool. I love it. It's such a good idea. <laughs> um, and do you, this is just a random question, actually. It's kind of do, do you go to hen parties and stuff, and or is it better to keep professional and sort of keep away from that? I do. So lots of times I do go to the best job parties and I do go to the bridal showers, um, and sometimes I don't, but it just depends on the package and what the bride would prefer. Right? So, sorry, there's another question we haven't asked you. <laughs> but, <laughs> What exactly is included in a package? How do you put together your packages for brides on their day? I have a couple different packages, everything from virtual bridesmaid where we're just chatting over the phone, over Skype. Uh, I have packages where I'm just behind the scenes at your wedding. I'm not an actual bridesmaid. And then I have packages where I put on the dress, walk down the aisle for you. Uh, But before I determine what package is best, I always like to speak with the bride first, see what she needs the most, and then from there design a custom package, whether that means that I'm flying out there for the backdrop party or just going to the wedding. Uh, I like to do whatever she believes she needs help with. Mm-hmm. and how how has it been received like have you when because I don't think it's a business that exists until I heard that you were doing it I mean, and yeah. I, still, I just still think it's so <laughs> clever and I wish I'd thought of it <laughs> I was the first person to act on this and think of this and at first people called it crazy they didn't understand it they thought it was a hoax they thought it was just me trying to pretend to be a wedding planner with this gimmick attached to it mm. um, which this is not at all I don't like weddings. I don't want to be a wedding planner. I don't do this because of that. I do this because I love people and I love helping out people. Um, And I think I've proven that because it's been three years. I've worked with close to 65 people in the three years and have really just continued to carry this to new levels. So I think the people who doubted it at first or who called it something it wasn't are looking at it now saying, oh, wow, this still exists and it's still pretty popular. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, And what mistakes and problems do you kind of notice bridesmaids doing on a wedding day? Oh, man, there are so many. Uh, I think (laughs) we focus so much on bridezillas. We say the brides are the ones that go crazy. But sometimes the bridesmaids become bridesmaidzillas. You know, they think the wedding's all about themselves. So I see bridesmaids all the time who are upset and crying and throwing temper tantrums because their hair doesn't look Mm -hmm. good or their makeup's not right. And I think that that's a huge mistake because even if you're not having the best day ever – Try not to let it show because you are representing somebody else's best day ever. Yeah, that's mm. so true. I mean, like Kate and I are both wedding photographers, so we see this quite often as well. You'll turn up and you're in like a room where it's suddenly got very stressful because one bridesmaid's whole mood has changed because she doesn't like her hair or something's gone horribly wrong. But, oh, yeah. yeah. It just, it, it's hard to fix because, you know, it's contagious. If one person starts to have a bad attitude, then everybody in the room is like, mm. oh, my goodness, I'm feeling like that too. So, I'd say for bridesmaids out there, the best tip I can give you is to just watch your attitude on that day and try to be as positive as you can, even if you're not feeling like it. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, oh, that's what you just answered that next question. I was about to say, what's your advice to making sure they do make good bridesmaids? <laughs> 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 do, you, do you think that bridesmaids need to be more hands-on as well because lots of them I kind of see are so kind of involved in getting themselves ready and doing what they want to do they're not really well it's probably how your business came about they're not really helping the bride so do you, do you yeah, see I, that quite often I do and I, and I think it's because no one teaches you how to be a bridesmaid mm. so you're not quite sure what to do so I don't really blame bridesmaids who are sitting on the sidelines trying to figure out what to do I just think that since no one tells you what to do, it can be kind of challenging. Um, So my advice in those situations is just to do what you can, help out when you can. And if you're not helping out, try to still be engaged, still be involved, ask what can be needed. Um, And rather than sitting on the sidelines, you know, texting or going on Snapchat. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I think that's so true, isn't it? Because until you've kind of been at a wedding, experienced one even as a guest, you don't really know what's involved with being a bridesmaid. 
because I know when I was younger that I've only been bridesmaids twice and once I was a little flower girl so I didn't really do anything that day um, and second I was bridesmaid for my sister-in-law so then I had a bit more of an idea but that was before I was photographing weddings so now I kind of as soon as I see a bridesmaid I'm a bit like why don't you do this could you just do this why don't you pick her dress up like <laughs> helping yeah. them out of it and I think that's a lot of what I do when I'm there as the professional bridesmaid in the room is just give direction, not in a, in a rude way or a bossy way, but just say like, hey, what's up, you know, and, and give some, some type of direction of what people can help with. And I don't think bridesmaids find that as, you know, me being bossy. I think they're happy that somebody's telling them what to do because usually nobody is. Mm. Yeah. And I guess you're quite impartial too, aren't you? So that's really good as well. Yeah, I am because in the end, you know, I am there for the bride and also I don't know these people. So it's not like I know what's going to make them upset or I know what's going to make them happy. I just talk to them like I would want someone to talk to me. And oftentimes that gets things done. You know, I'm not coming in there with any history with them either. So they look at me like I'm an impartial stranger in the room just asking them to help. Yeah, I think it takes some sort of bravery on your part as well. It's quite difficult to walk into a room of women and get them all on your side. Yeah, it is. But, you know, I've done this so many times that now it's almost just a natural thing to do. Um, I'm not scared of it anymore. At first, I was really nervous. But now I look at it as this is my job. This is my eight hours here. And then when I leave, I never have to see these people again. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty <much. laughs> So you don't really get nervous anymore. You're sort of quite... Cause I, I take it, were you quite a confident person to even to begin with? Or has it given you more confidence doing this job? I think it's given me more confidence. I don't think I was ever super confident before this, but I have had experience working with women in the past. A lot of the jobs I've had in my life have been with working with women who never knew me before, who I had to walk into a room and advise or mentor. So I always enjoy doing that, which I think helps me get through this job, is that I really like connecting with strangers. I like meeting new people, and I like helping people. So I think all of that was a recipe for why I enjoy doing this and why it's not scary, but almost just a challenge that I want to get through. Yeah. Um, have you ever, can you tell us about examples of when you've saved the day at a wedding when things hadn't gone to plan? Yes, um, that <laughs> happens way more times than Great. I wish. <laughs> I think a lot of that, like you know, is when you go to enough weddings, you can almost predict the disasters before they happen. <laughs> you can almost look around the room and say, that's going to go wrong, that's going to go wrong. So um, a lot of times that's what I'm there for. Um, you know, I've had everything happen from cakes dropping on the floor where I had to fix that last minute. Wow. Um, brides not fitting into their dress, having to, you know, become a seamstress last minute. Um, to grooms going missing, having to chase them down. No, really? Every, every wedding I go to, I walk in and I say to myself, you know, what's going to happen today? <laughs> Every wedding has something interesting happen, not go wrong, but just happen. Mm. Yeah, so you actually had a groom that went AWOL and you had to go and try and find out where he was. Yes, I had to find oh. a missing groom. I've had to find so many missing family members, it's crazy. <laughs> oh my word. Nice. And what about the cake situation? Because I always look at the cakes and I'm terrified of like... Going near them. Them. So, Yeah, for them to actually, I've never seen one fall. Like, oh, that's te Was that the person supplying it or did somebody bum it, like, bump into it? Yeah, it was um, like a three-tiered cake and they went to move the table with the cake on it to the middle of the dance floor and the, the table collapsed. So like, there was something wrong with the table and while they were moving it, it just broke. So the cake flew up into the air and smashed down on the ground. I happened to be nearby, so I caught the top layer of the cake in my hand. But the bottom layers were all over the floor, and I had saved, like, a piece of cake that was just... It was tiny, but it was still edible. So I think they used that one that I caught in oh. my hand. The rest of the cake was just, like, all over me, all over the floor, everywhere. Oh, oh my no. God. That is it insane. <laughs> For you, that's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, what you said a minute ago about um, putting brides into their dresses I think that's another thing that we should bring up in terms of making bridesmaids aware of because so often when a bride tries on a dress she tries it on the shop and it's put on by the shop owner of the boutique yeah. and then when they get them home and get themselves dressed on the day they, it's like how how does this work how does this lace end happening so many people or like the amount of buttons they always panic about how long it's going to take and haven't realised I think that's very important to bring up because you're right. Wedding dresses are so complicated to get into. They're not mm. just a step and zip up kind of thing. There's things you tie and there's things you pull and there's things you button. And it's like, 
it takes a good 15 minutes. You know, it's not an easy task. And I think that one recommendation I can make to brides is to try to do it the day before, a couple days before. Mm -hmm. Get the person who's going to be helping you there to help you do it before the wedding. Figure it out because the last thing you want is on your wedding day to try to get into your dress and it not work and not look good because the the lace is all messed up. Like, you just want to make sure that it fits you well. And you're right. Like, in the store, they make it look gorgeous. But in real life, I think it's a little bit tricky. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And I think bridesmaids get ready before the bride as well, because they always seem to get ready the same time and then no one's there to like help yeah. her at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've seen I've seen that too, where the bride feels super lonely, even with 10 bridesmaids in the room. Oh, oh that's really sad. Oh. Have you ever oh, sorry. stayed really good? Sorry, I just suddenly thought, sorry. Have you stayed like good friends with any um, brides you've helped along the way and sort of got a really nice friendship from that? I have. You know, there's a couple brides who I've stayed really good friends with. The first bride who ever hired me, Ashley from Minnesota. Um, we're still good friends. I've seen her a couple times throughout the years. Um, and it's been really cool making friends through this job. I, I stay in touch with a lot of my brides. We're texting. We're Facebook chatting. We see each other. Uh, so it has become a real relationship business, which is really awesome. That's really cool. And you also mentioned as well that you do, if, when you are the bridesmaid for hire where you're there wearing the dress and walking up the aisle and everything, that you would also do a speech if asked to. How does, yeah, that, so how does that work when you don't really know anybody? So I've given my fair share of maid of honor toasts and it's really interesting because a lot of times I, I do get to know the bride anywhere between a year and three months before the wedding. So I do get to know her. We do have a relationship. You know, the speech I'm giving obviously doesn't have a ton of history about us in there because we're recent friends, but I speak about what she's taught me about love and marriage. You know, as somebody who's not married, I always find a lot to learn from the people I work with. So a lot of the speech that I give is just about love and marriage based on what they've taught me. Mm. That's a clever idea. I like that. <laughs> would you ever fly over to England for a wedding to help somebody? I would love to. I would absolutely love to. It's always been a place I'd love to go to, so that would be so cool. Mm -hmm. We'll see. have to see if somebody, yeah, would like yeah. to meet you. Yes. That'd be, you could just come over as like a long lost American cousin that no one knows. Yeah, that would, that would be so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, awesome. and what do you um, love most about your job then, would you say? I would say it's connecting with strangers I would never have the chance to meet in this world. You know, we're very stuck with where we live and who we are. And oftentimes we don't meet people who are far away from us. And it's been a real treat to get to meet people who are nothing like me, who live in completely different parts of the country from me, and to really build a relationship with them and learn from them. And that's just been the most incredible part. No other job I've ever had has allowed me to do that. And this has just been amazing. And has yeah. it taken you really far? Are you still, all the weddings you've done have been in America or have you traveled further afield for them? So far they've been in America, but I have had clients who are from other countries getting married in America who hire me. But yeah. I really hope to go international. I have my passport and <laughs> it would love to. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that, it's, I love that it's helped you travel around your own country more though to see more of that. That's pretty amazing. And yeah, and I never got to do that before. So it's been really fun seeing new states. Yeah. Um, I had a question, but it's completely flown out of my head. Oh, no. <laughs> it's all okay. There's like so much I want to ask you. Um, oh, yeah, what I was going to say, do you do, do you do this as a job full time? I do. So this is one of my full time jobs. I'm also a writer, so I do both things. I write different articles and books, and I also work weddings. Mm. Oh, cool. And do you want to tell us a bit about what you're writing as well? Yeah. Sure. So I just finished writing a book called Always a Bridesmaid for Hire. It recently just hit stores in February and March. The book talks about my journey as a professional bridesmaid, what it's been like to walk down the aisle for complete strangers, and it also dives into my completely messed up love life and the things that I've tried to do to find love. I went to a matchmaker. My mom hacked my dating account for me before. So it's really a parallel of what I've learned from brides I've worked with and also what I've learned from going on dates myself. Well, that's cool. That's really sweet. I used to say that all the time when I'm – because I was a wedding photographer for years before – I was engaged, obviously, and um, I used to always say, oh, "Oh, I'm just the bride. I'm just the photographer, never the bride." That's how it was. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely how I feel. Always the bride, never the bride. It describes me to a T. Yeah, it's a bit like yeah. that film, Twenty Seven Dresses. Oh, do you get to keep all the dresses? I oh. do. Oh my god, I have about forty that are on the floor of my room right now that I'm getting ready to donate because I live in New York City. Things are tiny here, and I just can't store them anymore. So I do get to keep the dresses, and I'm looking forward to donating them. 
Oh, wow. That's so cool. Yeah, because it's not often you can wear a bridesmaid dress, is it, really, to most things? No, I never wear them again. Normally what I've been doing is friends who go to weddings, they call me up, they say, hey, do you have a dress this color or can I look (laughs) at your collection? And my rule is if you borrow a dress, you keep it. So I've been slowly giving away a lot of dresses. Yeah. Oh, that's really kind. (laughs) Have you had had any favorite dresses? I have. There's a couple that I really like. Um, There's one that's this blush colored pink and it just has a sweetheart top. And I just, I love it. It fits very nice. I love the color. And it's one of my favorite bridesmaid dresses to wear. Mm. Mm. That's a good Aww. way of um, bulking out your wardrobe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is true. Um, oh. So, is there anything else you wanted to ask you? No, I think we breathed through that, actually. Is there anything that you'd like to add, Jen, that you... Um... I don't think so. This was great. I had so much fun chatting. Yeah, <laughs> good. I really hope that it brings you a wedding in the UK, because that would be so fun. Yeah. And you have to come and stay with us. Yeah. That's awesome. I'd love to. If it does if it does happen, we're gonna to have to have you back on the show so you can tell us all about your first British wedding. Yeah, that'd be so cool. <laughs> right, so um should we wrap up and you can tell us um where to find you and all your sort of details if somebody wants to um wants to hire you. Sure, you can find out more about my services on bridesmaidforhire.com and you can check out the book Always a Bridesmaid for Hire available in bookstores and on Amazon and you could email me at jen at bridesmaidforhire.com. Perfect. Thank you so okay. much for joining us. Thank you for having me. You are welcome and we'll see we'll speak to you when you come over to England. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for listening to Get Wed. Would you like to hear even more from us? We have lined up some secret Get Wed episodes for our exclusive Get Wed members. To become a member, then go to www.getwedpodcast.co.uk and click on support. From here, you'll find our Patreon page and you can unlock the level of membership that you want. Supporting us through Patreon will help us grow Get Wed and give you even more content. So if you enjoy listening, then support us today. Until next week, happy planning!